Hello everyone, I want to go over some concepts on how you can expand your range on horn without feeling like you're going to destroy your face every single day. Now in a previous video I had kind of mentioned some of the basic fundamental principles of playing horn and on a few of the things that I mentioned I always talked about having smooth and connected air and that's something I really hold true to my heart and that's something that I really like to use when I'm practicing. Um, so here are a few things you can keep in mind when you're playing higher notes and lower notes. First of all, when I'm buzzing on the mouthpiece, I'm always thinking about glissandoing up or down to each note, so that way I understand truly how connected my air is. So, this is a little exercise I like to do, where I just go and you hear how throughout each note I'm always keeping my air moving. I'm not, uh, uh, uh. I'm just going very smooth and connected and that'll create a really nice sound when you play on horn. For example, or And you hear how smooth and relaxed and connected my air is just from the entire time. Um, so with that in mind, when you're going to play higher or lower, for example, you should really concentrate on the feeling of your air rather than focusing on what is going on so much up here. It is important to realize what your face is doing. But, and especially with your tension in your face also, like relaxing your eyebrows, making sure your, your corners on your mouth are firm enough, but not too firm to where you're creating a frown or too much tension up here. And really just pay attention to the vibrating sensation of your lips and relax into the core of each note when you're playing. So, uh, for example, whenever I want to play higher, I just do things chromatically. Here is a very important thing you should remember when you're playing high though, is that you should only play high when it's necessary. And so when you have the time, I would usually block my practice sessions. Okay, so in the mornings, I like to do maybe 10 to 15 minutes of long tones, and then I like to do maybe 10 to 15 minutes of flexibility exercises to get my face a little bit warmed up, and then I usually play a little bit of scales with, with a tuning drone just to make sure I'm playing in tune a little bit after that, and then I stop. That is my warm-up session for the morning. It usually lasts up to 45 minutes to an hour max. I try not to create too much time, but I try to get myself set up for the day. So for example, when I'm, when I'm playing those scales, uh, I usually do it if I'm preparing an orchestral excerpt, I usually do it in the key of the excerpt so I have it in my ear for the rest of the day. I set myself up in the morning for what I'm gonna do. And also, if I feel like I wanna play a higher scale, like if I have a high horn excerpt that I have to prepare, then I choose a scale that's an octave higher. Or if I'm doing Shostakovich five, I do, um, I do like an F minor drone and I go like in the lower register where I can feel my break uh, between my range, for example. Those are just a few things you can, you can do uh, to set yourself up early in the morning for these kind of things. So with that being said, uh, something I like to do is just chromatic notes.
Now, something I want you to realize when you're playing higher is you don't need to force your face to play it. You really can relax up to the higher notes. I would say put more energy into the notes leading up to the higher notes and then back away once you're getting closer to the higher note. So for example, I'm going to exaggerate that feeling of accelerating your air up and relaxing up to the top. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily play everything like this, but this is just to demonstrate the kind of feeling you should have when you're going up to these higher notes. example that's just an exaggerated thing but that's kind of the feeling you should have of keeping your air accelerating and moving up to those higher notes. So that's just one example of a thing you can do when you're practicing higher notes. There's also some accuracy exercises I look at sometimes where I play a note five times in a row and I have to get that note right for the five times that I play it. So for example take the horn off my face Take the horn off my face. Take the horn off my face. Also, being consistent with how you sound every time is important. You don't want to just sound like and and not have the same consistency of articulation, have the same consistency of being in tune at the moment you hit the note. So, that's something you can practice with higher notes, like with high A's. So you want to have the feeling of hitting the note as soon as you make your articulation. So when you're playing higher notes in general, your tongue position, the back of your tongue is actually elevated a little bit and you're keeping your air, your core really firm so that you can feel the pressure of your air. And so it's not like, it's not like a thing where you just feel like you're playing a lower note, like like, it, it just doesn't feel like you're able to, you know, release your air properly. So, make sure that you have the right amount of compression when you're playing higher notes, and you have like an E vowel shape. Like, in German, there's some vowels that are like A, E, E, E. And so, whenever you have these feelings, you almost feel it in your diaphragm a little bit. Like, what are you doing with your air to coincide with what your tongue is doing at the same time? So keep that in mind. Another thing I like to do is obviously play scales. So if I want to reach a high C, I think about releasing any kind of tension or pressure I have in my body, whether it be my shoulders, my neck especially. I try to relax my neck and I also relax my ears, as crazy as it sounds. I relax everything I'm doing. I relax my fingers. I relax everything up here. And I just naturally let myself play a high C. I don't force myself. I let myself play a high C when I want to. Now, don't spend too long playing high notes or you will create some injuries like focal dystonia or other related injuries to your face. And I don't want that to happen to any of you. So be smart when you practice high notes. Only do it for maybe five minutes every day trying to expand and build your high range. So when you're practicing lower range things, here's a little thing you can do. Uh, if you feel like you have a break in your embouchure or a space where it feels like you're, you're changing your embouchure naturally, you should be able to fight through that break and also feel like you're connecting your air all the way down to the lower notes. So obviously chromatics is another thing you can do to help improve your lower range. So just going. Just keep going down and feeling like your air is going connected through those lower notes. 
now, if you heard me just then, it sounded like I was going, ah, ha, ha, ha. You want to make sure you even out that connection. That's something I also work on. Do you hear that time? It was much more connected and smooth. That's because I was thinking of... Not... That's not going to help you at all. So think about the efficiency of your buzz going lower and higher. That's going to be a main theme you got to pay attention to. So those are just some quick examples of things you can do. I wouldn't spend too long focusing on your range per se as a horn player. It is a very important thing to have, but first of all, pay attention to your sound and always creating a beautiful sound every time you pick up the instrument. Because if you're not in the right mindset, if you're not in the right feeling, you're not going to have a good day sounding on horn or feeling good on horn when you're playing. So try to minimize the mistakes you're making, uh, whether it be in your warm up or any other kind of things related to that. So one final note for this video, I would just say pay attention to how you sound first and foremost. And second of all, don't destroy your face. And third of all, be reasonable with what you're doing and make sure you're setting yourself up for success when you're playing. So thank you for watching. I hope you find this helpful and please ask me some questions below because I went through a lot of things very quickly. So if you would leave me some feedback, I would be very happy. And I am very happy you guys are enjoying my content here on Billy Billy. I'm going to be making some covers eventually. I've just had some busy time with school, so I think making some quick teaching videos will help you guys out during this time and show you guys a little bit of what I work on in my daily life also. So I might be posting some orchestral excerpts very soon, and I will be showcasing some of the techniques that I go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.